Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica Flynn, and I'm the owner and maker of Flynn Sisters Boutique. Today, I'm gonna to show you how I created that heart pattern in Cricut Design Space for my Clueless Cup that we released a couple weeks ago on the channel. I will link the original tutorial for this tumbler down below in the description box and the comments as well, so you could see the full video if you haven't already seen it. But here's how we created the pattern. So the first thing we're going to want to do is measure the height and width around our cup in that pink space. We want to do this after we glitter an epoxy since we've now added obviously some width to our cup with the glitter and epoxy. So we're going to be making this pattern in Cricut Design Space. I'm going to first pull up the shapes feature and I'm going to select the square and I'm going to resize my square to that same height and width as our pink section of our tumbler. The size and width of your square will be the same as the height and width of whatever section you're going to want to cover with your pattern. In this case, mine's going to be 9.25 inches wide by 4 inches tall. So we're just going to resize our square to those same dimensions. And the only reason that we're doing this is so that I can use this as kind of a template or a roadmap, if you will, for how we're going to be spacing and sizing our pattern. I also like to line up this rectangle with the ruler on my grid so I can use uh, both the ruler on the grid and the square to kind of help me out. I'm gonna go back to my shapes feature and select a heart, and I'm gonna resize the heart to 0 0.20 inches. So just under quarter of an inch. I want them to be nice and tiny. And I'm going to align that heart with the half inch line. So a half inch down from the top of my rectangle, this represents a half inch down from the top of the section on my tumbler. Then I want to space each additional heart an inch apart across the whole board. So I'm gonna space my next one approximately one inch below the first one using the rulers on my grid as my guide. I'm gonna duplicate and do the same for the third heart. And while we've got that third heart still selected, we're gonna duplicate it again and place it exactly one inch below that third one. So what I should have is four hearts spaced at one inch apart. I'm gonna select Control Shift on my keyboard and I'm going to click on each heart. This is going to just select all four hearts. Then I'm gonna to go to align at the top of my screen and click align to the left or the right, either way. And then I'm also gonna click distribute horizontally. This is going to space all those hearts evenly and have them nice and lined up. While I still have all four selected, I'm gonna click attach. Once I have that first row attached, I'm gonna use this same row um, in all subsequent rows for our pattern. So I'm gonna, while that row is still selected, I am going to click duplicate again. And then I'm going to space the second row one inch away from this first row and also in between the spaces of the first hearts. Okay, so this second row will go down all the way to the bottom of my little rectangle template here, and it's exactly an inch away from the first. I know it's an inch away because I'm paying attention to the rulers on the grid of my canvas. I'm going to repeat that process, uh, row, like alternating top to bottom, top to bottom through the whole rectangle. You'll also notice that that first row is pushed all the way against the side of the rectangle, while my last row will be one inch away from the edge of my rectangle. That's because we want the pattern to line up once it's actually applied to the cup. Once 
Once I have my rows placed, I'm going to select Control Shift on my keyboard again, and then I'm going to select every other row. So for this, I'm gonna start with these ones here, the kind of upper level rows. And once I have those all selected, I'm gonna click Align again, and I'm gonna select Align Top, and I'm also going to go back and click Distribute Horizontally. This is going to space them all out evenly, and it's also gonna make sure they're all lined up at the top in the same way. Once I've done that for all my upper level rows, I'm going to repeat that process um, with my bottom level rows. So I'm gonna deselect everything, then I'm gonna click Control Shift on my keyboard, and I'm gonna go back through and click every other row again, this time on the bottom row, or like lower level rows. <laughs> okay, and this time I'm gonna select Align Bottom, and then I will go back again and click Distribute Horizontally once again. All right, so once I got everything lined up and pretty, I'm going to select all my heart rows at once. And I'm gonna click Align Distribute Horizontally. So now everything should be as evenly <laughs> spread out as we can. And while this may seem like a tedious process, having all of those hearts evenly spaced are what will set apart a good pattern from a great pattern that looks really nice on your tumbler. Once we've got all of those rows aligned, I'm going to delete that rectangle that we had created earlier because we don't need it. And then I am going to reselect all of my rows. And then I am going to attach all the rows together. You want to wait until the very final step to attach all the rows together. And by attaching all these rows together, it ensures that they all cut at the same time on your vinyl. So we're gonna cut this whole pattern from one sheet of vinyl. Okay, so here she is all cut. I just cut this with regular Oracal 651 vinyl and it weeded really easily. And then I'm gonna transfer it all at once to my cup. You wanna make sure that you trim off any kind of excess um, backing paper that you may not need, which is going to make it easier for you to line this up on your cup. And then once I got it on the cup, I found out that I miscalculated by maybe like 1 16th of an inch, um, which is really easy to do, particularly when we're trying to match a pattern around a cup that's already been glittered and epoxied because that surface is not completely straight. Um, but no big deal. I just trimmed the last row away from the pattern. That way, once I applied the full pattern, I could place that last row centered between the beginning and end of the pattern as a whole, if that makes sense. So it would give the illusion that it was just as evenly spaced rather than having a larger gap. I hope that all makes sense. Uh, but that's it for this video. I promised you guys when I originally did this clueless Tumblr tutorial that I would do this in a separate video. My apologies that it took so long, but I hope this is helpful for you guys. Let me know in the comments if you appreciate these quick little Cricut tips and small Cricut tutorials rather than keeping them in the full tutorials because I think some of you either just skip right through them <laughs> or I just go over it way too fast in the larger tutorials. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're having a fantastic week and we'll see you again soon. If you love this video, you could check out our last video here. Also be sure to find us on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, and of course subscribe for all our new videos that come out every Wednesday and Saturday. Thanks so much for watching. See you soon.